Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is V, and in this video I'll be talking about how to prepare for a research assistant interview. Interviews can be extremely daunting, especially if it's your first time applying for a job. Remember that no one gets it right on their first try. You will get more confident with practice as with everything else in life. Good preparation will also help you reduce your nerves and give you the best chance of success. So in this video, I'll be talking about the purpose of an interview and also the different types of interviews, the key differences between research assistant interviews and academia versus industry, what you should research about the company or the institution that you're interviewing for, and finally, potential questions to expect and how to answer them. The main purpose of an interview is for the employer to get to know you. It's to dive deeper on the qualifications that you mentioned in your CV and cover letter, to test your intelligence, learning ability, potential and adaptability, and it's also to gauge whether your personality fits into the lab group and culture. I know that sounds really intimidating, but rest assured that the employer is also pressurized to make the most out of the interview and get their best hire. The interview is also a time for you to get to know the potential lab group that you'll be working in, so it's also an opportunity for you to ask questions. Try to think of an interview more as a conversation and not as an interrogation. Different research jobs value different skill sets. In order to test the certain skills or personality traits, there are different interviews and even aptitude tests designed for that. The main types of interviews include in-person, video or phone call, video with recorded answers, problem solving, assessment center case studies, and also presentations. It's important to note that sometimes the types of interviews and even application process differs between academia and industry. In academia, the application process is relatively straightforward and also traditional. You send in your CV and cover letter, and if you're successful, you're shortlisted to the interview. The questions asked during the interview varies between researcher to researcher. But from all the interviews that I've personally attended, each one asked about the research experience mentioned in my CV and cover letter, and also some knowledge about the research area that I'm applying for. In academia, they generally will not ask situational questions, and situational questions are things like, tell me about a time that you were faced with a difficult situation and how you overcame it. These types of questions tend to be much more common in biopharma companies. Sometimes academic labs might also send you a problem to solve prior to the interview. This could maybe be some qPCR data with the CT value of a viral load, and they might ask you to interpret that beforehand and discuss it during the interview. If the lab that you're applying for is more bioinformatics based, they might send you a data set for you to analyze using RStudio and then maybe plot it into a heat map or some sort of graph and finally discuss it during the interview. Another common interview type in academia is giving a presentation. For a research assistant position, they don't tend to expect you to have extensive research experience. So the presentation is usually about your education, some research experience, lab techniques or analytical skills, and this usually lasts about five to ten minutes. In industry, the application process is slightly different. You're often sent a psychometric, situational, or aptitude test. The reason that larger biopharma companies usually do this during the earlier stages of the application process is because they receive large amounts of applications. They tend to look for candidates with a particular skill set, problem solving method, or even personality trait. So these tests that are not knowledge based help them shortlist the large number of applications that they receive. On top of that, you're usually required to submit a CV or even a statement of interest. A statement of interest can be something like, in 250 words, tell me why you're interested in applying to company X. Another example would be, in 500 words, describe a relevant research experience and what you learned from it. In terms of interviews, larger biopharma companies tend to involve two stages of interviews. One is usually just to get to know you as a person, so a kind of general interview. The next kind is to test your intelligence and also problem solving skills. Smaller biotech companies may only do one round of interviews, and sometimes these are interviews with recorded answers. So how this works is that you are usually sent a link and once you click on that, a video recording starts. A question then pops up on the screen. So for example, why do you think that you're a suitable candidate for this job? You then have maybe about a two to three minute timer to answer that question. And of course, everything that you're saying is being recorded. Once the timer is up, you're then moved on to the next question until the interview is complete. Just to clarify, the types of interviews that I've mentioned are not exclusive to academia or industry. It really differs from institution to company. What I said was just based off my personal experience and what I've heard from friends and colleagues who have applied to similar fields. Although there are differences between interviews and academia, and industry, there are questions that almost any employer would ask. In some form or another, an employer will ask you what you know about the research that they're doing in their lab. This is to see if you are actually interested enough to look up their research area, and also to see if you have any background knowledge in that field. And this brings me to a very important point which is regardless of what job you apply to, you need to research the employer. In the context of academia, 
One of your interviewers will most likely be your supervisor, the other one is the principal investigator, and the final one may be the lab manager. Make sure to look them up and look at the papers that they've published. Of course, it's unrealistic for them to expect you to read all of their papers or even a paper in full. This is because they are aware that you're applying to more than one position at the time. So I would say that reading the abstract and key findings is more than sufficient. Once you have an idea of the research area they're involved in, so whether it be stem cells, prostate cancer, or immunometabolism, make sure to revise the back background information on that as well. Of course, they will not expect you to have background in a field that you did not study during your undergrad, so don't worry if you don't know much about it, just ask during the interview and they're usually more than happy to just give a quick summary. Ultimately, they want to know how you think and whether or not you're a good learner. In terms of industry, some companies tend to publish a lot, so make sure to read those papers prior to the interview, but some companies choose not to publish so much. In this case, it's important to understand their pipeline, which is usually found on their website. Biotech companies usually have a sort of pipeline or platform tab on their website and this usually describes the process of how they design their drug, antibody or biologic. They will also most likely mention what makes their molecule unique so make sure to keep note of that as well. Larger biopharma companies may have many different projects, pipelines or even ongoing clinical trials so it's unrealistic for you to know everything. It's also important to remember that a research assistant role in a larger company is usually very specific and more like a service. Of course this isn't the case in every company Company, but in such cases, the employer tends to value specific skill sets and efficiency in a particular lab technique like maybe qPCR, analyzing blood samples, or even flow cytometry, rather than scientific knowledge. So now that we've covered the different types of interviews in academia and industry, I'll now run through some potential questions that you can expect and also how to answer them. The first set of questions are experience-based. Employers tend to like to ask fresh graduates about the current research project that they're working on. This helps ease the candidate into the interview by starting off on familiar grounds. It's a good thing because no one will know your project better than you do, so this helps to set up some confidence during the interview. Expect to be asked about the lab experience that you mentioned in your CV and cover letter. For example, a question might be phrased like, you mentioned that you did tissue culture during your undergraduate study. What cell line did you use and also how did you maintain these cell lines? Another example would be, you mentioned that you did CRISPR during your lab placement project. Was it a gene that you were trying to knock out? and also how did you measure this. The next set of questions are knowledge slash critical thinking based. As mentioned before, it's important to research what the group does to prepare for any knowledge based questions. So for example, if the group focuses on stem cells, make sure to revise certain terms like pluripotency, totipotency, embryonic stem cells, iPSCs, and Yamanaka factors. If the group focuses on immunology, research the type of pathogen that they're studying, so is it RSVs, COVID, or even lipopolysaccharides. Then based on the papers that they've published, study the immune response. Do they look more at the innate immune response, so things like macrophages, neutrophils, phagocytosis, or do they look more at the adaptive immune response, which are things like B and T cells, affinity maturation, and also VDJ recombination. Just note that when I say knowledge-based, they don't expect you to recite the entire Krebs cycle. On the other hand, they might ask something like, tell me what you know about the adaptive immune system. You give their answer and then they may talk a little bit about the research area that they're currently working on. And maybe this could be a little bit about a type of cytokine that they're interested in. This can slowly transition into questions about lab techniques. So they might ask you, we're looking to measure cytokine X. How would you design an experiment for this? You might answer something like, oh, I would do an ELISA. And then they may continue on to ask, what do you know about the principles of an ELISA? Another potential question they might ask is, with the work that we do, can you think of any future therapeutic applications? So are they working towards a small molecule drug to design an animal? model to design a biologic, is it CAR T-cell therapy, or maybe is it a vaccine? The next set of questions can be about your aspirations. So a very common question is why did you apply for this job? You can mention what it is about the project that caught your interest, maybe is it an exciting platform technology? It is also okay to say that you would like to gain more experience in a particular field. Honesty is completely okay and the employer knows that it's unlikely that someone wants to be a research assistant for a very long time. So if this job is a stepping stone to get to where you want to be in the future, it is completely fine to say that as well. Another common question is where do you see yourself in the next three to five years or even how does this job align with your future? Is it a PhD that you plan to do after or maybe become a research scientist in a relatively similar field or are you looking to settle down and have this as a long-term job? Do you plan to stay in science? Do you plan to venture out in the future? The final set of questions I'll be talking about are situational questions which are much more prominent in industry compared to academia. These are questions like Tell me about
about a time that you held a leadership role or you were faced with failure in the lab and how you overcame that or you had a difficult person to work with why were they difficult and how did you handle it or tell me about a time when you took a risk or tell me about a time when you motivated a group of people you get the idea so to answer situational questions it's good to use something called the star technique s is for situation so describe the situation t is task so the task that you had at hand so what you needed to do a is action so what you actually did in response to the task and r is result so what came out of it. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I make videos on what it's like pursuing an education and career in biomedical science. I also make lifestyle vlogs to give a holistic view on what life as a biomedical researcher is like. So if this is something that you're interested in, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!